Hello. Right now, I am sitting in an airport in Europe. Particularly, or specifically, I should say, I'm so tired. It has been like 20 plus hours without any sleep. And um, it's just been a very long time, especially coming out of the holidays with family. But I am in Croatia in the Zagreb airport and heading over to Dubrovnik. I'm going to be going to a New Earth Festival. I am so excited. It's going to be a high vibe, intentional community. Um, it's a New Earth Music Festival. There's going to be lots of music and dance, lots of activations. But I just wanted to make a quick video about travel and food and holiday times and food. Because one of the things that I really put myself to the test this time with the holidays was visiting family. Now, I haven't seen my family in several years, like many of us. Um, but, you know, for me, this was like very particularly um, important because, you know, I was, um, you know, I've always been that person who ate differently and was really conscious about my health and what I ate. But this time around, I was really strict and I was not making any concessions for what was being um, offered. So for example, my mom makes incredible Indian food. She is such a good cook and all my aunts um, are amazing cooks as well. And unfortunately, the ingredients they use are extremely low quality. They use, you know, the cheapest of cheap ingredients, even though they don't need to. This is not out of a necessity. Um, and, you know, they just use kind of what we're marketed to and what they've been doing for years. Now, I get it. You don't always know um, different things. And so you just do what you normally do. However, I have to say that they do have awareness and consciousness of these things because they know I've been talking to them about organic food, um, organic produce. For decades now and so this is not something new and you know that's just a choice they choose to make but now I was really kind of putting down my foot I was like nope not gonna have anything with canola oil not gonna have anything with seed oils not gonna have anything non-organic you know they you can go to the store in uh, where they are and you can find organic and non-organic blueberries and they would choose to buy the non-organic and I just wouldn't eat anything and I'd go to the store and I'd buy my own ingredients and buy my own groceries and I'd bring it home and I took a shelf of the fridge and this is what I was using and, you know, it was a really, really trying and important time because it was really interesting to watch all of my family members and relatives just do what they normally do. And, you know, for the relatives, like my cousins who are conscious, you know, a little bit conscious, not, not you know, not really conscious about food, but, you know, they're, they're aware you know, they, they, I think we're a little bit taken aback by how strict I was and um, not in a negative way, but in an intrigued way. And this is what's really important is that when we set boundaries for ourselves, we set an example for others. And when we do that, we give others permission to do the same. And this was really important because, you know, I just, you know, made my own food and I would make others food too. I didn't just make my own food for myself, but I would offer it to others. And my food was always more colorful, more vibrant. They could taste the difference in it. And I wasn't doing anything really out of the norm. I wasn't making my crazy recipes. I was doing things like avocado toast on rye bread, putting sprouts on them, putting, you know, maybe some pickled onions and pickled cabbage and you know I would make like vegan nachos and I would just have a whole bunch of veggies on it and all these colors and it just totally impressed them and it was the simple things that really impressed them but you know watching me say no when I would look at labels you know what's in this no nope, not gonna eat that and they would eat unconsciously and then I'm listening that they're going through sickness after sickness. I'm watching my brother, a doctor, you know, who said like, you know, he eats really well normally and, you know, he, he could, we could all do better. But, um, you know, when he goes home, it was just like whatever, they'll eat whatever, he'll eat whatever's presented to him. And what happened? He got sick. The doctor got sick, right? So it's really important that we take 
our control and we take our stance with what we put into our bodies. Because it's so easy to say, oh, well, it's just being nice to eat the food that they've prepared for us. But guess what? They're not the ones that have to live in your body till the end of your days. They're not the ones that have to feel the ache and pains in your body. They're not the ones that have to deal with the sickness in your body. It's your responsibility to take care of your body. Now, I've been traveling for like 20 hours now, and I did the same thing. I have all this luggage, and there's lots of food in my luggage. And in my carry-on luggage, I have lots of fresh food, fresh food. I brought my own nuts. I brought my own like cookies even that are like all these really um, good quality and no bad ingredient cookies and like, cucumbers and blueberries and bananas. And, um, and then I brought like, you know, some food that I made for myself. I also bought this like dip that was like this, um, it's called better than two nuts made with nuts and seeds and, um, and it's just like a little dip that I had with some Mary's crackers, which are really clean crackers. And I did all this and I also brought food for my daughter because when you start to look at what's offered in airports, if, excuse me if you hear all the airport noise behind me, but if you start to look at what's offered in airports and what's offered in planes, we know this is low quality stuff, right? We know that. That's not something that has to be explained to the majority of people that, this is not like healthy food. This is just kind of travel food. It's what it gets labeled as and you get take whatever you get on an airline. But I was looking at this tray that was presented to me on this international flight. I requested a vegan meal and it was like Dole fruit cup, right? Like the Dole company and their fruit cup, which is just nothing but chemicals and really bad fruit. That's not fruit. And, you know, this like packet of salad dressing from Kraft, which is just, ugh, again, not anything that is something that you want to put into your body. Um, all these like branded and, you know, just generic products that, you know, on a plane, planes are really taxing on the body because you are under a different pressure, you're changing um, your environment, which, you know, your microbiome is responding to, your immune system goes down. And if you eat this food, it's not helping your body to recover. It's not going to help you with jet lag. It's not going to help you with just feeling good overall. So you have to watch everything. So just bringing this food made such a difference. Well, now I'm in this tiny, tiny little airport here. They had to, you know, Croatia is a small country to begin with. It's, you know, I have to take several flights just to get to where I'm going. And, um, you know, finally we get to Zagreb and, you know, they had to open up passport control for us because there's like nobody else here. And um, so we could, you know, get on to our next flight. I'm sitting there and they're like, well, you know, there's nothing in the terminal. Well, I'm like, what's out here? Well, there's nothing out here either. I'm like, I can't like fill up my water bottle. And they're like, no. And I had water in my water bottle. I'm like, that's great. But then to get through passport control, I had to go through security again. And I had to dump that water, which I didn't dump. I just downed it. I drank it. But like getting into this terminal, there's nothing here. There's one tiny shop, which you know, is closed and there's no water fountains. There's no nothing, absolutely nothing, which is just ridiculous. I don't know how that's even safe for somebody to not have access to water, but luckily, what do I have? I, I'm not allowed to bring water in. There's no water here. There's no water I can even buy. And so luckily I have cucumbers, I have blueberries, I have hydrating foods, and we're gonna get the best water from all of these types of foods. We're getting structured water from these foods. So what, and I apologize, I'm a little bit all over the place with this just because I'm so tired, but I thought it was just so important. This is my first time traveling in three years. And I have been that person who used to have to go to two countries a year, if not multiple destinations. Like I was just such a, you know, um, roaming nomad when it came to travel, but you know, I had a home base, but like, I just loved to travel. I was somebody who would always travel and I always brought my food, but never to this extent. And I feel like as I look out in the world, things are just, you beginning to feel the squeeze more and more, less, less options, less, um, fewer varieties and brands even being offered at these airports. There's just 
a squeeze that's happening that's really trying to deter us from taking care of ourselves. And so I just really want to emphasize that our health is in our hands. Nobody is going to, you know, fix your health for you. It was really sad for me to watch my family eat food late into the night that was going to hurt them, watch them get sick, get up, take a pill. Everybody's just complaining. Oh, I'm sniffling, I'm this, I'm that. And, you know, I you know, I'm you know, I don't say that I never get sick. Of course, we all have times when we get we have a, a period where we are um, experiencing a lowered immune system because there's so many things going on and your body is telling you it's time to rest. But like, you know, I was experiencing the same weather. I was experiencing the same environment. I was going through everything that everybody else was going through. And we end up in really different situations. And it's all because of the way I'm maintaining my body. I understand that it's really easy to say like, oh, I'm taking a break right now. But it's really important that you have a strong system when you start to give yourself these breaks and really start to think about what you define as break because food is either medicine or it is poison. It is not both at the same time. And it is either going to help you and it's going to help your body heal and it's gonna make you feel better or it's gonna be something that your body is trying to eliminate and trying to rid you of so that it can do what it normally does, which is heal. So when you're making that decision for yourself, is this like to take a break, let's say, you know, you're going home, you wanna eat your favorite meal. Is that something that's going to help you or is that something that's going to hurt you? Now, there are foods that you can have that maybe aren't made of the highest quality ingredients, like what your mom makes and it's a special meal because it's cooked with love. And having that is not you know, a bad thing because it's cooked with so much love. But maybe going to McDonald's or, you know, just being like, whatever, I'm traveling. I don't want to think about it. I just want to, you know, have other people take care of me. And, you know, you know, that is not as good because it's not cooked with the same kind of intention. And so is that a real treat for your body or is it a punishment? And this is where we start to discern ego from what our body actually needs. It's usually our mind that's asking us for these things. So anyway, long and rambling, lots of different points. As I mentioned, I'm pretty tired. Traveling with a nine-year-old by myself through these airports, and I, I got my workout today because I was having to carry both of our carry-ons suitcases with my heavy backpack up and down stairs because it was one of those every single flight had stairs we had to go up and down and then the airports themselves had stairs we had to go up and down um, and the buses and everything so it's been it's been quite a day I've gotten um, you know a good workout I'm exhausted I'm sleepy but I feel really good and it has to do with the food that I'm eating. So I encourage you to really think twice. It takes more work. It takes more intention in order to feed yourself at all times. However, once you start getting into the habit of doing it, it will become like second nature. You will think about what food you want to bring with you. You will start to prepare how you bring that. This was something that used to be a chore for me and it is now a privilege. I am so grateful that I have access to the food that I need when I need it. And yes, when I go to, you know, when I'm in Croatia out of the airport and experiencing life, I'm gonna be able to have other food because I have been taking care of myself in a way that that food is not going to hurt me. So remember, take care of your body so that you can enjoy life. All right, bye.